So good morning everyone. It's about 8 a.m. right now and although I could start work, I prefer to have my mornings to myself. I'm actually starting a class today on camera confidence so that I can learn how to speak confidently to a camera, which as you can tell, I probably need that practice. <laughs> but it's taught by another YouTuber, Ali Abdal. He makes a lot of videos on like personal growth, personal finance, self-development, productivity. I really like a lot of his videos. They are super inspiring. So a lot of people ask me how I do both a nine to five and content creation, and this is how I do it. I'm always trying to grow my skills and it's a priority for me. That's why I set aside time every morning to work on things like this. I'm gonna be spending like about an hour just taking this course and then I'll check in with you when I actually start working. By the way, hey, I'm John. I'm a software engineer living in San Francisco and in today's video, I'm going to share a behind the scenes look at my daily routine from start to end. So to start my work day off right, I make myself a nice cup of coffee. After making coffee, the first thing I do is clean up my desk. Alright, before we get into it, I just wanted to show you really quickly what my desk actually looks like most of the time, which is pretty messy. <laughs> so I just have my notebooks, I have some camera gear stuff. Um, probably the messiest parts of my desk is that I have post-it notes everywhere. So whenever I record, I have to make sure that none of my post-it notes are in frame or they're turned over. I am expecting something in the mail today that should help get rid of that problem. Even though my desk is messy now and it will eventually get messy throughout the day, I do like to start my day with a clean desk. And I would say it's very similar to like making your bed in the morning. It's just like something very easy, something you can build a habit on doing. You can also think of it as like building up momentum of getting stuff done because you know, you can check it off your to-do list and then get started with your day. So in my last day in a life video at the New York City office, I kind of gave an idea that I'm on a new team and working on a new project. So I just wanted to give an update on how that's been and how it's been going. And honestly, it's been great. <laughs> so in terms of work, I've been taking the lead on my current project and so I'm definitely growing towards my career goals. So I'm really happy about that. Also, I know it's kind of weird to say like work is fun and I'm enjoying it because there's a lot of hate online about like working nine to five, over glamorizing, having a corporate job. So yeah, it's just a good reminder that you're only seeing one day of my life. I don't show like every single day that I'm working. All right, so it's Monday and I usually know what I'm going to work on for the week because I planned it out on Friday, but last Friday I was just too tired and I didn't do that. <laughs> so as much as I like to be on top of things and like being super organized, the reality is that it can't be like that 100% of the time and that's okay. So all it means is that I have to do all that stuff right now and it's not a big deal. I don't have any meetings in the mornings on my Mondays. I actually don't have any meetings at all on Mondays, but usually something pops up, so we'll just have to wait and see what that looks like for today. So my day is looking like I'm just gonna be coding all day. Um, I have a huge backlog of things that I need to fix and implement. All right, so it's almost lunchtime. I only ended up sending out one code review because I got a message from someone that's new to the team. They just joined a few weeks ago and they had a couple weeks of training and now they're trying to set up their code environment so that they can start contributing to the code base, but they're running into some issues and I know how frustrating that is. So I wanted to spend some time to make sure that they can get everything up and running. I will never forget the time when I first started my career in coding. I felt like there were always more professional people out there with their laptops who already knew all the most incredible tools and hacks, but didn't share their knowledge which gave me a huge fear of missing out. So I managed to solve my problem my way. I use SetApp, an app subscription service to solve tasks for Mac OS and iOS. Just type in your task and the app will suggest the tools. No need to pay extra, get 240 plus premium tools with your monthly subscription. When you launch the app, you're greeted with a homepage that features apps that you can install. On the side, you can see the different categories of apps that they support like lifestyle, creativity, developer tools, productivity, and more. I wanna share the apps that I recommend, so let's go to the On This Mac section. The first app is Mosaic, and this makes it really easy to organize your windows to maximize all of your screen real estate. The next app is Lo-Fi Garden. If you're like me and you love listening to lo-fi music while you work, this app is for you. Focus is another app that helps you stay focused. This app will block apps and websites to prevent you from getting distracted, and there's even a feature where you can schedule your breaks and focus time. Bartender is a neat app that lets you organize all the mini bar items by importance. 
GIF Fox is an app that quickly and easily records a portion of your screen and turns it into a GIF. ClearVPN is a VPN that anonymizes and secures your internet usage. If you're someone that uses unsecured or public Wi-Fi, such as at a library or coffee shop, you really should be using a VPN to protect yourself and your data. So get your tools with Setapp, try seven days for free. Thank you to Setapp for sponsoring this video. At 12 o'clock, I take an hour for my lunch break. Today, we're making something quick, easy, and relatively healthy. On the menu is oatmeal. I weigh it out to make sure I get the portion sizes right, and I'll also add some granola and banana as toppings. One of the benefits of working from home is that my girlfriend and I get to spend time together during the workday. We usually watch TV while we eat, and today we're watching Abbott Elementary, which I highly recommend if you're into mockumentaries. It's just so funny. So the solution to my messy desk and post-it problems just came in and it's products from OrbitKey. I have my opening knife here. I also got this thing from Amazon that makes it really easy to hide all your private information from the shipping label. So if you find yourself spending a lot of time removing labels, you might want to consider buying it. It saves a bunch of time. Oh wow, they sent me even more than just a dust mat to try out. So that's pretty awesome. I didn't know they were going to do that. Let's see, this must be the dust mat. This is the slim size. Uh, let's see what else is in the box. Magnetic clip holder. This is what is used to like organize the cables on your desk so it's not flying all over the place. They also sent me a key organizer. Pretty cool. I saw this on their website. It's basically so your keys aren't dangling around. It's a pretty nice color too. This is the cactus color. And then also is this. A multi-tool, nine functionalities in one slim profile. So it's a box cutter, bottle opener, pry bar, flat head screwdriver, Phillips head screwdriver, letter opener, metric ruler, imperial ruler, and coarse file. So this goes in the key organizer, so you'll always have access to a multi-tool. So yeah, this is a pretty handy super slim profile, which will... <laughs> pretty stuck in there. So yeah. Looks really nice, feels really good. I like the color. This is the feature that I'm really excited about. It's their document hideaway. So basically you can put all your papers and post-its in here and it's a way to keep all the visual clutter off of your desk. But yeah, this looks good. I'm excited. Thank you Orbit Key for sending this to me. So awesome. All right, enough talk, let's go set this up. Alright, so I managed to knock a few things off of my backlog and send out more code reviews. I was actually in the middle of coding something else, but I got a message from someone on the user experience research team and it's like super urgent and super critical to our project. And if you don't know what a user experience research team does, so I found a good definition from LinkedIn. User experience research is when a company studies and gains insights about the impact of the design on their audience. So the team briefly mentioned wanting a feature on Friday, but they didn't really say that it was something that we needed. But now that it's Monday, it's like super crucial to the study. So they want to know when I'm going to be able to deliver it. So this is a perfect example of why it's so important to be organized. You want to communicate that, okay, I'm going to be working on this, but this means that these other tasks might not happen or might not happen on time. And you want to say like, is this okay? And it's always good to communicate these things ahead of time, just so that everyone's expectations are aligned. I really just want to make sure that I know how much work it's going to take and everyone else knows how much work it's going to take and what that means for the other tasks that we had wanted to get done. Four thirty is when I start winding down from work. I actually have an alarm on my phone to go off to remind me that I need to start wrapping up for the day. I talk about my work notes in a lot of my videos and I think it's because it's just so crucial to my workflow. It's basically just a whole Google Doc of all the bugs that I worked on, all the code reviews that I sent out. So nothing super fancy, but it does help to keep me organized. And then I also update my to-do list for tomorrow. So everything that I didn't end up getting done today, I'll add it to tomorrow's to-do list so that when I actually get started in the morning, I know exactly where I left off. At 5 p.m., I jump straight into my workout routine. Working out from home is so convenient that I rarely ever skip a workout. By exercising immediately after work, I don't give myself time to procrastinate or to make up an excuse to talk myself out of it, and it's worked out really well. At 6 p.m., my girlfriend makes dinner for the both of us, and we hang out in the living room, usually watching TV. 
At 8 p.m. I brush my teeth, take a shower, and do my skincare routine. One of the reasons why I brush my teeth so early is that it helps me from snacking all night, and it's also nice just to get it out of the way. It's still pretty early, but I basically have the rest of the night to do whatever I want, and that's my favorite part about having a daily routine. It's a way to structure your day so that you can fit in everything that you want to do that will help you work towards your goals. At 10 p.m. I start winding down and stop using all of my devices. Thanks for spending the day with me. I'll see you in the next one.